Have you ever wondered exactly how a dual clutch transmission works down there? I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. This episode is rated triple C because that's what dual clutch transmissions are. Compact, complex and increasingly commonplace in the new car inventory mix. Car makers are including them for three main reasons. Fuel efficiency, performance and lightning fast gear shifts. You can expect 6 to 10% improvement in fuel efficiency compared with a standard epicyclic auto with a torque converter. And maybe a 6% improvement in 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. That's 0 to 60 in America. And the shifts, well, they take place in less than one tenth of a second. Try doing that in a manual. Both Volkswagen and Ford have tried as hard as they possibly could to trash the global reputation of DCTs. Volkswagen with its botched DSG recall fiasco and Ford with its infamous power shit transmission, a living travesty that many Ford owners experience daily as a nightmare. But not all DCTs are actually disasters. The important thing is to know if you are buying one and then drive accordingly. I'll cover that off in a separate report. They look just like autos from the cockpit, these DCTs. There's a lever, you move it from P through R and N to D, and then the shifts are simply automated. Here's how they work. Every time I talk about dual clutch transmissions, I sense a disturbance in the force, an outpouring of millions of voices of sheer hatred. <laughs> because people are just a bit unsure, I think, about what's really going on down there. So let us clear this up. What's here basically is a diagrammatic schematic type representation of a dual clutch transmission. There's a clutch pack here and the gears are all here clutches, two separate gear trains. The top gear train carries first, third, fifth and seventh gear. The bottom gear train carries second, fourth and sixth. This is really important. So the two clutches here, they're not actually side by side in the gearbox, they're concentric. So they're both bolted up to the flywheel, but the tricky thing here is only one of them can be engaged at any one time. Let's say, for example, we're driving along in third gear. So we've got the clutch engaged and third gear is engaged and all of this stuff is computer controlled. So the selection of the gears is actuated by computer and the engagement or disengagement of the clutches is actuated by computer and high speed servo motors actually doing the heavy lifting. So you might be accelerating in third gear because you've just taken off from the lights and you're pulling away in traffic, revs are climbing, speed's climbing, you're going from 3000 RPM to 4000 with a moderate throttle. The computer looks at that and says, on the balance of probabilities based on those inputs, I'm going to need fourth gear next. So it pre-selects fourth gear. This gear train is not driving because this clutch is disengaged from the engine. But when the time is actually right, based on the speed and the load and all of the inputs to the computer, one high-speed servo motor disengages this clutch and almost simultaneously another high-speed servo engages this one. And the result is less than a tenth of a second, seamless transition from this drive shaft to that drive shaft. There's no need to shift gears at this point because the gears are already engaged. The only thing that needs to happen to affect the gear shift is to disengage this clutch and to engage this one. Obviously, if you keep accelerating, speed keeps increasing, the smart money is on fifth gear being needed next. The computer goes off and tells the gearbox to pre-select fifth gear and then it waits for the right moment in time 
and just changes over and bam, less than a tenth of a second later, there's a seamless shift to fifth, which is very nice indeed. Same sort of thing if you're on the brakes. If you're in this condition on the brakes, you're in fifth gear, you're on the brakes, your speed starts dropping off gently. There's a safe bet that before too long, you're gonna need fourth gear to stop the engine sort of lugging under load. So fourth gear remains pre-selected at the right time. Bam, you get a seamless changeover and you're back in fourth gear. And this is all fantastic. You have to bear in mind though that the job of a dual clutch transmission, the computer's biggest challenge if you like, is the prediction of the future. What gear is required next? And sometimes this is more of an uphill battle than at other times. So let's take the case where you might be back in third gear here. You've accelerated off at the lights with a bunch of traffic, you're following a bunch of cars in front of you and all of a sudden they start slowing down because there might be congestion up ahead or whatever. So in that situation, congestion up ahead, you get off the gas, right? And you just start coasting forward. You don't need third gear anymore because you don't need that amount of torque at the wheels to drive you forward. The computer says, well, to save you a bit of fuel, I'll pre-select fourth because that'll just let us lope along and it might get ready. It might be on the cusp of going bam and you're back in fourth. That's fantastic, except if you look over your shoulder and you see there's a gap coming up in the outside lane, then you indicate, you change into the outside lane, you put a bit of gas on because what you really want now is acceleration. You want to accelerate into that empty space and get around this congestion. Unfortunately, in this condition, the computer has pre-selected fourth because it's made a dodgy prediction about the future. And then when you get on the gas, this is like not in the script as far as the computer's concerned, and it writes a letter to its psychologist and says, he's doing it to me again. Or maybe it's the barrister. He says, my good man, would you please instruct the driver to give me adequate warning in future? In any case, it takes the computer a bit of time to sort all of this out and accommodate your new demands. So it pulls out of fourth gear and gets back into second, and it has to do that before it can give you the gear you want by shifting over to this clutch. And that's why there's that pregnant pause of hesitation from time to time with dual clutch transmissions, typically in these dithering driving situations. Please note, I did not just say dual clutch transmissions are mentally retarded and therefore shit. They're not. There's just negative feedback to go with the positives with dual clutch transmissions. You get your fuel efficiency, wouldn't it be nice if instead of just getting it, the dual clutch transmission made an EFT deposit into your bank account and said, look, here's how much I've saved you this week. You might be more forgiving of it in those circumstances. You get your nice direct shifting when the future is clear cut. So that's always nice. But at times in these dithering driving situations, in traffic, on the gas, off the gas, change demands, it does take it a little while to get itself sorted out and go, oh, whoops a daisy, don't need fourth, need second, bam, there you go. So what I'd suggest here is that if you only take one thing out of this discussion, you could, apart from assuming that I'm absolutely crap at doing these diagrammatic explanations, the one thing you should take out is dual clutch transmissions are good at what they're good at and there is a little bit of confusion that will slow you down for a few tenths of a second here and there in sort of dithering environments but they're not shit. They're definitely not shit although I must say Ford and Volkswagen have done an awesome job for many years now besmirching the reputation of this technology broadly and that is wholly undeserved. Back to you, fat man. Over the next week or so, I'll be releasing a three-part series on DCT stemming from everything I learned from just completing 10,000 kilometres driving one. That'll be the good, the bad and the ugly. You'll get it all. You'll see my key three positives here, plus three key negatives and four critical conclusions that you'll need to help you decide if a DCT is the right transmission in your next new car. What an excellent reason, therefore, to subscribe to my channel now. So smash that subscribe button with great anger and furious vengeance, if you must, but while you're down there, why not show the bell icon thingy just a little love and it will be reciprocated, you know, in the form of a notification whenever I inflict a new version of myself 
on the YouTube universe. You know you want to. 10,000 Ks in a DCT. Did it make me or break me? That's coming up in the week ahead. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.